Uh, welcome to Greeny Art Spaces Community Art Workshop, um, Kanesh Kanuka, We Are All Related. My name is Kimberly Hawking and I am the director and curator of, of Greeny Art Space. We welcome you from near and far to this very special time of connectedness and rootedness together in our cultural heritage. So those of you who we know from past openings, um, we're so happy to see you um, in this alternative space and we miss seeing you in person. Um, for those of you who we don't yet know, we're looking forward to meeting you and we're looking forward to getting to know you through your artwork. Thank you so much for joining us today. Um, there's most likely not gonna be enough time to complete your artwork during the presentation, but we hope to inspire your creativity and we'd love to feature your artwork once completed in an online gallery. So information about participating in our online gallery will be shared at the end of this presentation in our chat function. Um, and the presentation is gonna be recorded and shared to Green the Art Spaces YouTube channel um, for you to review and share with others later. For those of you who don't know us yet, um, welcome to Greenly Art Space. We're a 501c3 nonprofit art gallery dedicated to enriching lives and commu cultivating community through art. So we do this through creating contemplative art shows, bringing art to the community, and providing space for art making, mentoring, and art therapy. Our dedication to our mission has not lessened during COVID, and we're here for you through this pandemic. Greenly was recently awarded the California Arts Council Local Impact Grant which serves to highlight the work of underrepresented populations. As a recipient of this grant, we're excited by our upcoming events, which include this and four other artist talks, as well as an art opening. We would like to thank the California Arts Council for their generous support. For this grant, Green the Art Space is working with Nesh Kanuka, a California Native American artist network. Together, we're creating and curating a unique exhibit titled We Are All Related, an exhibition of Nesh Kanuka artists. This exhibit will be installed at Green the Art Space and includes both contemporary and traditional art forms. Many of the artists in this exhibit also created top collages on the topic of We Are All Related, some of which will be shared at the end of this presentation. We'll have an online opening on September 27th and um, the show can be viewed by appointment after that. You're all invited and we really hope to see you there. Greenly would also like to thank the LA County Arts Commission for the operational grant, which has helped us to keep going during this pandemic. And most of all, we would really like to thank um, our individual donors um, who helped to support us through this time. So thank you so much. And you're welcome to donate to us after this um, at greenlyartspace.org. All right, so that's end of logistics and other things about Greenly. Um, now it's my pleasure to introduce to you artist extraordinaire, Gail Werner. Gail received her Masters in Fine Art from California State University in Long Beach in 1985 in drawing and painting. She is a painter working in oil and encaustic and she specializes in the monotype printmaking process. The encaustic piece which is featured on our invite was made by Gail. Gail, Gail is part Cupreño, Luceño and Kumeyaay, three tribes located in San Diego County. Her work is a reflection on Southern California landscapes um, desert and mountain, as well as creation stories and traditional songs called bird songs that are sung throughout this area. Please be sure to come and see her and other Nesh Kanukat artists work at our upcoming exhibit. I met Gail years ago when we worked together on the Mid-City Studio Tour. Over the years, she's participated in many group exhibits here at Greenlee, as well as organized a group show of women artists titled Reunion Wham! Women Art Makers. She has shown in multiple galleries and exhibitions over the years. Her commitment to her cultural heritage and ongoing art practice are inspirational and admirable. I greatly respect her as an artist and a friend. So here is Gail. Yay! Thank you so much, Kimberly, for all that you do. Hello and welcome, everyone. It's my pleasure to introduce you to Cat High. Cat High is a Native American of Hoopa descent, which is a tribe located in Northern California. She is a super special woman to the Neshkanukit artist because she is the driving force behind our network. Cat was one of the founding members in 2001, but the group lost traction a couple of years later. Kat revived the group in 2013, and it continues today 
only because of Kat's endless enthusiasm and tireless efforts to promote us. Kat is dedicated to preserving and teaching Native American culture. She was recently featured in a highly regarded documentary called Tending the Wild about how California native plants are important to the indigenous cultures here. For over 15 years, she has served as the director and program coordinator for the Haramungna Native American Cultural Center. And if that's not enough, Kat is also an occupational therapist and a registered physical therapist. As we find ourselves in the midst of this pandemic, many of us are feeling isolated from our families and our friends. This project, which is close to Kat's heart, can offer us a way to connect not only to our families and our cultural backgrounds, but to one another. Thank you so much, Kat, for your generous spirit and for putting together this workshop for us today. Please join me in welcoming Kat Hi. Hey friends, hi, welcome to my home in Topanga. This is my dining room and my craft table, and today our workshop space. So um, I wanted to tell you a little bit first about my home in Topanga, which is on Tongva and Chumash ancestral land. And one of the things that we like to do is acknowledge whose land we're on because they cared for it for 10,000 years before the Phillipses came and built my house. <laughs> So welcome to Tongva Land. And I want to welcome you to this project, which was started, if you could show slide one, in a book called We Are All Related. Um, and it was done in British Columbia. Um, and the artist in charge of it was George Littlechild. The the school there, the community there was um, multicultural. So he wanted to work with the different cultures to share and learn about each other. And could you do slide two, please? So he worked with the kids to create a collage that included their family, their culture, their elders, um, and a little bit about how they feel they are all created and connected. So it, it put together an art show that is featured in this book. So we're going to do the same thing today. A lot of us come from different backgrounds and when I work in the garden I talk to people about their roots and most of us are uprooted. Most of us are disconnected from the land and what we want to do is feel that network of connection again and begin to sink our roots back down into the land and become part of it. So here's our collage. Um, I'm not an artist. I'm, I'm for Neshkanukit, I'm called the whip woman. And the whip woman in a powwow is the one who gets everybody up to dance. And so I have so many artistic friends, so we wanted to join together in a network. And so what I'm starting with, and you can go to side three, I think, is a picture of my garden because I'm connected to the land. And this is a piece of my garden in the front is white sage. And then the steps going up to an upper level of the garden. And that's, the basis for me is the land. So we're going to start with that. You can start with plain paper. You can start with whatever background you want. And I use school blue, blue stick, double-sided tape. And I also use a glue gun. But the glue gun is really only for parents, adults to use. It's very, very hot and should be done with supervision and care. So now 
with, are you ready? Everybody ready? Got their pictures together? Okay. Let's go to slide four, I think, which is, is that the basket cap? Yes. This is a, a northern, northwestern California basket cap, and it has a particular design. The designs have meaning. But what I did was, it was too big for the background for everything. So I took a piece of it. Um, come back to me, please. Okay, I took a piece of it. I cut out a portion of it and I colored it yellow. Not being an artist, I did have some difficulty staying within the lines, but, but I colored it so it would stand out from it. And I'm going to start with this as the cultural element of my exhibit. And I'm going to take the glue stick. And I don't know what you're using. If you're working along with me, And I'm going to glue it on as the base of my collage. So it's going to be kind of a smile shape at the bottom. Um, I've got all the things at the bottom. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. Then I have a photo. This is a photo of my grandparents and me and my cousins. And I did it in sepia, so it would stand out from the colors of the collage. And I'm going to glue that on at kind of an upper corner of my story. Now, when you're creating a collage, it doesn't have to be straight up and down. We're living in a wiggly world, as the eagle would say. And it could be at an angle, things can be overlapping. Um, it's part of the story. Now I have a picture of my parents and my brother and me. And what I've done is take little scissors and I've cut around the head space. So it gives it a little more of a dimension rather than just being a squared piece. So I cut around just to give it a little more shape. And I'm going to glue that on. Now, lastly, picture wise, I have a picture of my two boys, and this was taken on the Hoopa Reservation sitting on a stump connected to the land. And uh, I'm going to glue that on. And I'm overlapping it a little bit onto the culture. Now I have, and you could show them, I think there's a slide of the butterfly and the words in Koopa. Heyung we malyo is what I said in the opening. It's, it's hi friends. And the butterfly is what I call my home here in Topanga, Kitty Wishche in the Hoopa language, Kitty Wishche corner. So I'm going to put that at the very top of my collage. Okay. How are you guys doing? You getting your pieces put in? Now then, this is part of my network of life. This is a basket start. <laughs> and I have very many basket starts. <laughs> so I'm going to use this basket start to show the network of connection from all of us. And for Native people, everything has spirit. The land has spirit. The materials that you build your basket out of have spirit. 
And when you work with the basketry material, you combine your spirit with that of the materials, and then that object has spirit. So, you know, for non-native people, a lot of our ancestors' objects are kept in museums. And, and it's difficult to sometimes go see those objects because they're separated from the people who love them. But with this network, what I'm going to do is use the glue gun. I have to put on my glasses to see what I'm doing. And put the glue in the hole oh, my tail. Oh, don't no, get it. <laughs> I'm keeping the glue gun on a paper plate so it doesn't burn my table. This, uh, this is my my neighbor, my Hi. community member Spencer, <laughs> who's helping me do this. Is it there? It goes again. Okay. pandemics. Okay, so I'm going to place my basket start on top of the other elements in my collage. And I'm going to hold it in place till it hardens a little bit. How are you doing with your collages? I see you're all so busy. <laughs> 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 this is going to be on YouTube on the on the Greenly Art Space YouTube channel so that you can do it later. But we'd love to have you all send your art in. Okay. So last but not least on my collage. I typed out a phrase that one of my teachers, one of my elders uh, shared with me and has been kind of one of the, the um, guiding principles. And Jane Dumas, who is a Kumeyaay elder and one of the actual last medicine people of the Kumeyaay tribe, she's from Hamul told us, take care of the earth, and the earth will take care of you. And in this time of raging wildfires, in this time of, of uh, losing a lot of our environment and our native places and our, our wildlife, we need to join hands and take care of the earth. So what I'm gonna do with this one is I'm going to use the school glue and I'm going to glue this one. Onto the top of the basketry material because it is part of the network and the communication and the connection from all of this from the early days to now. Well, okay. Maybe the blue gun. Okay. Once again, please be careful. And right side up is important. Mm. So I've used this type of project for many, many years. I worked at the Motion Picture Hospital um, with senior people from the industry. And they had so many stories to tell. And one of the ways to tell those stories was through collages. 
So we worked with him to do that. And then, then my dad himself had Alzheimer's and came to live with me. And one of the ways that we did to keep those memories alive was we made a scrapbook of those memories. And we'd paste them in. And then about once a month, we'd go through and we'd pick out a memory that we were going to relive and talk about and celebrate. And uh, we kept this for him so that he could go through and remember all those things. And I kind of did the same thing with my children. And I created a folio. I think this one says Joel. And we created a folio of their work. And now I'm finding that their children have become interested in what their parents did, finally. <laughs> so here is, is some things that could be kept to keep your collages in a folder like this. And then you can review them. And if you have kids, when those kids get old, <laughs> you'll have it available for them. One of the other things that I did with my kids is I made every space in my house an art gallery. So Spencer, could you turn that? This is one of the collages, just using those command um, picture hangers and you can change out the gallery. I just use a little matte frame and you can change it out. Yeah. Thank you. Um, could you show the the uh, garden collage, please. Okay, so not everything has to be family. This is a collage based on my garden. And what you see is, is a picture of, of uh, miner's lettuce which is one of the plants that we use in the spring, a little matilaha poppy, a butterfly. Um, a picture of me gathering uh, mallow and a sign that says, go gathering with a song in your heart. And then down below is my granddaughter holding uh, tomatoes that she's gathered from my garden my desert tortoise eating roses that he's, we've gathered from the garden. And, uh, uh, what's in the bottom? Oh, some of my neighbors coming over to gather nasturtiums for their salads. So this is my celebration of the garden. Um, can you go on to the next one, please? <laughs> This, this is an homage to, to my fur and feather family. And uh, um, in the top is a Cooper's Hawk, which I have little bird feeders and the Cooper's Hawk comes down because those little birds are on his menu. In the corner are my cats looking at the bird feeder from the other side of the window. Um, I've got a uh, collar from one of my wild cats, flicker feathers from um, a wild bird that used to be here in Topanga and has become somewhat scarce. My dog, my do wolf dog and, and a cat curled up together on my bed and me helping my old dog who just passed up the ramp. He needed physical therapy. And in the bottom corner is Old Bill, the 116 year old desert tortoise. And it says, We are all related uh, family, community, and friends. 
So these are just some ideas that you can do with your collages. And you can use them um, as memory aids, as celebration aids, to, to celebrate a birthday, to do anything special this day. And what I try to do is bring family and community back together and, and really celebrate who you are. So did anybody get theirs done? And, and I just wanted to give a big thank you and a yay to um, both Kat and Gail. So yay, thank you Kat so much. That was so wonderful. And we really appreciate you sharing with us. Um, well, we're gonna have an online virtual opening. Um, this is an important date for We All Are Related, an exhibition of Nesh Kanukut artists. That'll be September 27th, 2020. Um, the time will be announced. Um, we're gonna have upcoming artist talks. There's Four more of those coming up and we'll be posting those on our website and social media. So you can go to greentheartspace.org for more info. Um, for the online gallery, you can submit to my email and we have someone who's gonna type that into the chat function so you can look at it later or you can see it um, on our YouTube channel. Um, and we want you to submit your work by September 20th so that we can have the online gallery up for when we present our um, opening. Um, please also, if you would like, submit a statement about your artwork because we want to know more about it and a photo of yourself. Um, we'll notify all of you as participants when the online gallery is up. And then you can, as I said before, you can go to greentheartspace.org for more information. And then when the art um, work is up, you can either call me um, at my phone number, 562-533-4020, or you can email me, kimhawking at al.com, and you can come to see the exhibit in person. We'll do social distancing and masks. It'll be a private um, showing just for you. All right, so this is an art piece that was sent by Inesh Kanukut um, community member, Evelyn Lozano. Thank you, Evelyn, for sending this to us. This is by one of our artists, Rowan Harrison. He will be um, presenting on pinch pots and ink drawings um, here in the next couple of months. This artwork is by Marie and it's out of, um, I believe it's pottery and really quite a beautiful piece that's also gonna be in our art gallery show. This is a 3D piece by Valina and um, we're gonna show you all the different sides of this piece. This is also in the art exhibit. And then this piece is a piece by Don Jackson, um, who is also one of the artists who is gonna be showing with us. And finally, we end where we started with this beautiful piece by Gail Werner. Um, yeah, we're so grateful you could join us today. You want to go back up? This is my son, Nathan Hawking, and he's the one who's been so skillfully running the Zoom for us. So thank you so much, Nathan, for all of your help. You did a great job. The question is, can you explain more about connecting? <laughs> Hi. Um, the connecting star. Oh, go back to the connecting star, I think, was the question. So maybe, I don't know if they mean your basket. Maybe if you could explain more about that is the question. Okay. I'm a basket maker. And, and when you're a basket maker, you go out to the land and you gather your materials so you're connected to the land. You dream something that is what you're going to build with those basketry materials like the basket cap, which connects you often to culture or if you're just free handing it to, to arts community, to who you are, to something in your past. And then I used it here as almost like a spider web, which is a network of connection, connecting grandparents and and children and and the land yes, sure. and culture all together. Yes. Okay. Um, in else? in your experience and in your story, there are things that have connected you to others 
um, in your past. I did one on the the dogs and the cats, and I'm connected to the dogs and the cats, and I kind of used the the um, collar as something that connects us. And in the background, it looks like a chicken coop, but it's actually a doghouse. Um, and those are things that have connected me to my fur and feather family. Um, in the garden uh, uh, piece, I started with miner's lettuce, which is, which is food for us, food for the nature and the animals in Topanga. <laughs> and people come and browse my hillside <laughs> for the miner's lettuce. And, and then some of the different people who are connected to that garden, be it neighbors, the old Bill the tortoise, my grandchildren, and, and the butterflies. You know, I grow milkweed for the butterflies. And so those are our networks of connection. Oh, Gail Werner says that she used the spiral in her work in a similar way. So that's, that's pretty interesting. Um, so then we had a question from Heidi that asked, can the general public come and view the artwork you just showed in person or one or two other people? So you're welcome to come with one or two other people. Um, that's fine. Basically, the show will be up after, so you can make an appointment after September 27th, and it'll be up until um, November 29th. So um, those are the dates that you can come to Greenlee, and you're welcome to email me or give me a call if you have other questions on that. All right, we have another um, question from Carol Churchill. It says, do you have to soak the natural materials to form the basket, have you used paper bark from trees? That's a question to Kat. Wow, <laughs> that's a whole course in itself. Um, yes, um, if you're if you're using natural materials, say you wanted to make a pine needle basket, you would need to soak those. If you were going to make a, a basket out of juncus, you need to uh, keep those moist. Um, to work with them. Um, it needs to be moist to be flexible. This, this one that I used here is actually a modern material called ground reed because a lot of our native materials for our baskets are almost extinct here in California. Um, so if you have access to the native materials and here in Southern California, it would be deer grass, and it would be uh, juncus or, or um, uh, blanking. Uh, you could even use cattails. There's other materials you could use. You could use raffia. You could use other modern materials to make a basket. Um, and tree bark. Um, There, there are different tribes, not Southern California tribes, there are northern tier tribes who use cedar bark and it does need to be moistened to get it to form into shape. Um, we use willow bark for, pounded willow bark for, for skirts. Um, we use dog vein, the outer coating of dog vein to make cordage. It's, it's an entire course. <laughs> okay, great. So, Kat, we have another question, which I think is from your um, son, maybe, from Joel. He asked, who, who is on your mug? So, your yeah, mug that's on your picture. <laughs> <laughs> oh, are you seeing my mug in the picture? Yeah. This, this is my end of summer cup, my mug from, from my granddaughters, uh, Nora and Amelia. And I get a series of wonderful cups. These are my favorite cups in the whole world with my grandchildren. And right now during this pandemic, this is as close as I've gotten to them in many days. <laughs> all right. Thank you, Kat. So we're, we're working to get to all your questions. Thanks for your patience. Um, so we have a question, anonymous question that says, what does the symbol mean on the basket headpiece? <laughs> uh, 
Um, um, uh, this, this design is actually a Yurok design, and I'm not sure what it means. A lot of them are sturgeon designs. They're, they're things in the elements that are, are native to Northwestern California. And um, this one in particular, because it was simpler and easier for me to color in, um, I, I chose a Yurok basket. All right. Great. All right. So now we have a question from Heidi and she asked, what Native American tribe is Kat part of? And did she grow up in Southern California or somewhere else? Does she participate in powwows and other Native American activities around the country? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm a descendant from the Hoopa tribe in Northern California. Um, and I grew up here in Southern California. I grew up in Palos Verdes and Redondo Beach. Uh, I live in Topanga now. Um, and uh, uh, I do go to powwows. I do go to more traditional Southern California Indian gatherings, which are more like big times or fiestas. Um, and, and it's, it's a long trail for the relocated Indians who do powwows to start accepting and incorporating the traditional Southern California Indian style of celebration. So we're working together and pulling this network tighter so that, that uh, peoples from all areas are represented and, and acknowledged. Great, they thank you. Um, Carol Churchill asks, is there a book or pamphlet that saves this history of Native basket making? <laughs> there are a great many uh, um, books. Um, the picture that I used is from a book called Her Mind Made Up, which was a doctoral uh, dissertation from um, Humboldt State. Um, and is a wonderful booklet of, of how women went to choose the materials for their basket, the design for their basket, and their interrelationship with all of that. Um, I could send a bibliography on baskets to the Greenly Art Space, and that could be posted up on, on the website if people are interested. So just send an email to Kimberly Hawking and ask for the bibliography. Great, yeah, we're happy to, we're happy to do that. And I know you guys may just wanna do the chat function so you, since you're so good at that, but if you wanna ask um, something in person, you're welcome to raise your hand and we can call on you and you can ask Kat yourself, but it's fine the way we're doing it. All right, so Cheyenne Grandi asked, could you speak a bit about the cultural historical, spiritual traditions that bring up the idea of we are all connected or we are all related? Yes, I can. <laughs> um, I don't speak for every Indian tribe. I only speak for what I personally learned. And I personally learned that it's, we are all part of the creation. We're all part of what was created. And that includes the physical land, the rock people. We call it Mother Earth. But all the rock people and are one child of the earth. The the animals, the four leggeds, the two leggeds are all part of the connection and they're all on an equal par. The the plant people are all part of that connection and they're part of the circle of life. One can't exist without the others. And uh, then the fourth is spirit. And we believe that spirit is in all things, um, from rocks to, to political leaders. <laughs> so we are all related in many, many ways. 
All right. Thanks so much, Kat, for that. Um, you guys are having really great questions. Thank you so much for asking these. We have another question um, from Juan Gomez um, to everyone. So, um, well, I guess that's actually supposed to be to Kat. Um, so has there been any type of movement to um, return native artifacts to their tribes of origin? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that has been a big struggle. There is a law passed by Congress, and I forget what year, called the Native American Repatriation Act. And it stated that those artifacts held in museums and universities and collections need to be repatriated to the people. And there's going to be a UC, a UC discussion on um, land grabs and repatriation. All of the UC uh, universities have held on to their artifacts and it's an uphill battle to get those things repatriated. One of the other problems here in California is they will only repatriate objects to federally recognized tribes. And in California, two thirds of our tribes are not federally recognized. They failed to ratify the treaties with almost two thirds of our tribes. And so those tribes have to go through another tribe to work with the universities and, and the museums to have those objects repatriated. It's, it's a long, long battle ongoing. Thank Did you that Pat, <laughs> for giving us that amazing information. We really, really appreciate it. So um, it looks like that's pretty much the end of our questions for now. Um, but we're so grateful that you joined us today for this event. Um, a huge thanks again. Thanks for answering, ask, answering all of our questions, Kat, and for all the work that you did. And we're really looking forward to um, everyone. Oh, Kat is holding something up, so we'll go back to Kat for a minute, but we're really looking forward to everyone submitting your artwork. Oh, there we go. There's Kat's finished Thanks, piece, and we'll put a picture of that um, up on our website um, as well, and uh, you'll be able to see it on the online gallery, so please do submit a picture of your artwork <laughs> to the online gallery. Yay, Kat, bravo. Thank you so much. Okay, so space.org. You can call me 562-533-4020 or email me at kimhawking at aol.com. Once again, our art exhibit, um, Nesh Kanuka, we are all related. Um, well, actually, that was the name of this workshop. <laughs> the art exhibit is called We Are All Related, an exhibition of Nesh Kanuka artists, and that will be, can be viewed in person after September 27th, but we will also be having an online opening um, that everyone can participate in. That um, information will be up on our website as well as um, on our uh, social media. Um, so you can email or call me to schedule an appointment if you wanna see it in person and submit your workshop artwork to kimhawking at al.com by September 20th. So that's the date you need to remember um, if you wanna be included in our online gallery. Thanks so much.